did I see something in the news recently? Some like about uh, just some love for Jason Newstead. Like everything, like they. I they, think so. Yeah, they've really. I think yeah. it's one of the things they've been opening up about because. In retrospect, and maybe it's because they've started to talk about it now, is like the way that, how they handled it. And the, yeah. The, and the more they're like really exploring how they handle him, they really fucking, they hurt him, man. I mean. Yeah. For people who don't know. Jason Newstead like was, right. okay. The, the, he was, the, the, he was the one who replaced Cliff Burton yeah. in Metallica after Cliff died. I see. Cliff and, died in 1986. Yeah. Okay. On tour with Ozzy. Yeah, they were they How were on a die? bus. A it, bus uh, on a bus. slippery road in yeah. Scandinavia. And it flipped over. Oh, he's and, the only one that died? He's the only, the only one, one that died. died. And they had, they had drawn straws to about like which bunk they were going to sleep in. And I forget if... Uh, Cliff got the longest Cliff straw. Got, he he show he got first choice, and according to the story, he wanted Kirk's bunk, so he switched bunks with Kirk. So, <laughs> af, when the when the bus accident happened, he was in that bunk when it could have been Kirk who who died. So it's like it's a, I mean the the myth the mythos over surrounding that accident is so huge. You can actually drive. To that spot, and there's a memorial where where Cliff died. Like it's that yeah. it's that powerful, um, and it's three hours out of the way. It's crazy, man. I mean, it's it's one of those drives where today a band at that level would probably fly because of the the terrain and how crazy it gets up there. Um, yeah. So they replaced they replaced Cliff him with Jason, with Jason Newstead, who was the bass player for a band called Flotsam and Flotsam Jetsam. And, Jetsam. Hmm. and right, he was a dude. massive Metallica fan. Um, they had a lot of people actually try out for the spot, including a um, uh, guy from Primus. Les Claypool. Les Claypool actually tried out. And they were like, this is interesting, but this isn't us. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. crazy, right? Right. Um, could you imagine Les Claypool with Metallica? Like, but the fucking shit you just like I think yeah. that, it, that it just uh, from a, a type A personality type right. thing that that wouldn't have worked it with wouldn't have it would have been a totally different band too many chiefs exactly yeah. um, so that's so when it, they people say like Metallica turned down Les Claypool that's the reason why because mm -hmm. I've always heard that and I'm like why would they turn right. him down well they turned him down because honestly at the time it didn't make sense yeah. you know and honestly this was before Primus was even a household name. You know, everybody, people need to remember the first album that Jason did was actually the Garage Days album, which was the right. cover album. The Garage Covers Days re-revisited. Re re-revisited. Re re I still, up until a couple of years ago, had my original copy. I, I had the 598 EP, the cassette. Okay, yeah. Because they had the 598 EP, and then they had the uh, the 798 vinyl. Because every it was always affordable, but it was always a different price for the different format and whatnot. How many tracks can you remember from Garage Days re-revisited? Green Hell, Last oh, Caress. Oh, yeah. Uh, Green Hell, Last Caress. There was uh, The Weight. Yeah. Uh, uh, there was Helpless, yeah. um, Crash Course and Brain Surgery, yeah. and there was uh, The Small Hours. That's yeah. the whole album. And then yeah. they end with uh, Green <laughs> Hell. <laughs> oh, dude, that's one of my favorite albums of dude, all time. It's epic. And they built, they recorded it in this garage that they that they built, basically, to kind of do just, let's just do something and vibe and see what happens. Mm -hmm. So this was before And Justice for All. So they record that. They go in, it's super fucking punk rock. It's super, like, yeah. I mean, it's dirty. And it's a great <laughs> fucking album, man. And that led to going in and doing Injustice for All, which a lot of people think was a reaction to the fact that they were subliminally dealing with the death. Cliff's the brick the because there's death, yeah. no bass on that album. Mm -hmm. At all, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, yet there, there are. You can go on YouTube and find versions where people have added bass, and they call it "and justice for Jason," because mm -hmm. they buried him in the mix. I mean, mm -hmm. it's such a two, two track mix that you're listening to it going, "My mit, what the fuck's going on here?" Because I remember I stood in line waiting for that album to come out, and I bought it and I listened to it. And the first time I listened to it, I was like, "This is fucking crushes. It's killer." And then I started going, "Well, it doesn't sound as thick as." There are other stuff, you know, but you didn't mind because it was riffy as fuck, you know? Thick as the bass. Exactly. 
And they think people talk about whether or not that was them subliminally reacting to the fact that Cliff was dead. And purportedly, the way they they treated Jason over the years was really, really bad. And even James has admitted to yeah. it. Because, I mean, it's, it's tough, you know? I mean, you just lost somebody that you were in the trenches with. They were all young. They didn't know how to process grief. Nobody helped them process it. So what they did was they took it out on the new guy. Or got really fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. All or both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was crazy. It, what? It, it, it's really just something special when people step up and acknowledge. That's right. really big. And it's it's something that, and this is how sad it is. When it happens, it, it, it catches you by surprise because not a lot of people do it. Right. Which you wish it was the opposite. You know, right. it's like you wish that it would just be something that you just take for granted. It's like, of course. Oh, fuck. Of course, man. My bad. I, I right. was totally in the wrong. If more people right. would own everything they do, not just the good shit, for but sure. the bad, man, you would just, I think there would be more of an embracing of humanity as a, as a whole. Big time. Yeah. An example of that, which I, I think is just so epic. Bill Clinton, after his presidency, right. stepped up to acknowledge his failure to intervene on what happened in Rwanda. Right, right. And that was really And meaningful. he's 100% correct to be, yeah. you know, like he really, it was in his hand. Right. And he, you know, and they I don't know They wouldn't call if it a genocide. And right. It was totally a genocide. Right. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Why should on him just because he's a bass player? I mean, you wouldn't do that if you brought on a new singer. Well, it's largely because they didn't, like I said, they didn't know how to deal with grief. And even though, J and I think one of the things is because Jason was such a nice guy. That and he was such a, like, it was a little bit like Karabi coming into the crew where he was right. like, dude, I can't believe I'm in Metallica. And they're right. like, buddy, we don't, we're not looking for a fan. Uh, right. We're fan. looking for a bassist. We're looking for somebody mm. who's yeah. going to, you know, help us take it. Because one of the reasons why Robert works is because Robert was Robert for years, you know. He's a fan, but he also knows how to hold his own. Whereas Jason yeah. came in and was just, you know, like... You yeah. know, you fucking grew up listening to Metallica. You right. Know? Like, they had done shows together on festivals and whatnot. He was a fucking fan. So, when you're already dealing with the negativity of grief, and you also compound it with alcohol, and your speed. your perspective on some shit like that can be skewed. And a harsh... How do I say this nicely? A harsh personality will dissect that and then destroy you for it. Someone that positive and that stoked about yeah. life, yeah. coming into that situation with three people who are really fucking hurting. You add alcohol and you know repression, and they're going to they're going to go. You know what? You're done. I'm going to shred <laughs> you. I'm going to yeah. shred. And that's it's sad it's human nature though i think there's another level too of just uh like the the type a like the the right the, the chiefs that right. you know just the, there's a level of control too many of it yeah yeah oh. and and lars and james are kind of notorious for that oh 100 do you like shopping on amazon i do and good news is steve-o's butt wipes for your butthole are available on amazon and if you want a real bundle of a deal, you can get Stevo's hot sauce for your butthole, plus Stevo's butthole destroyer, and Stevo's butt wipes for your butthole. It's the butthole bundle available on Amazon right now. Yeah, dude.